Can we pray in the spirit for the next three minutes? Loud in the spirit. Loud in the spirit. A strong atmosphere has been opened unto us this morning. If you are wise, you won't be quiet. If you are wise, you will not keep quiet. If you are wise, you will not keep quiet. Deliberately pray loud. Deliberately pray loud. Deliberately. Deliberately pray loud. Loud. Haberete si kabarate baliata. Soberete keberete. Shaka pate si kabarate mo. If you are wise, you will not keep quiet. Aye ke parimata. If you are wise, you will not keep quiet. Oh, Makaba. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, Mua. Awari kese Mua. Watare. Awari kasatare. Haro wofo. Miro weho. Rima we. Wagogo. Oh, 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 I will raise this my sound again. Oh, Mua, Awari Kese Mua, Shabababa. Oh, Prichile, Awari Kese Tare, Aro Wawo, Mua Wawo, Ima Wawo, Lord, we ask that there will be a stronger release of your power. <laughs> Show us mercy this morning. Show us mercy. <laughs> In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Can we be seated for a few minutes? Uh, can, can somebody just help those brothers to help those brothers? Help that brother. Help that brother. Hallelujah. I will be sharing with us briefly on what I titled. Those that have received mercy. Those that have 
received mercy. I appreciate my father and the Lord for the privilege for standing before you this morning and my mother in the Lord. Thank you so much, sir. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 2. Second Corinthians, those that have received mercy. We will do a 45 minute talk, probably 50 minutes or one hour. Then we will pray. I sense in the spirit yesterday why daddy was ministering. I saw that many of you that are here now, some of us, uh, we receive light. You are, you, you are aware that there is a call upon your life, but you've not been able to capture that area that the great one has called you to function. I see that there is a desire beyond what people tell you. You want to, you see, there are things that only Jesus can communicate. Some of us are here because we heard him clearly. This morning, you will hear a voice behind you. He will say, this is the way when you walk to the right and when you turn to the left. And you will find rest unto your soul. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? Therefore, since we have this ministry. Now, in order for us to advance in this discussion, we must know the ministry that Paul the Apostle is, is talking about here. The Bible, thank God for the English translation. We know that the Bible originally was written, the Old Testament was majorly written in Hebrew language and part, part of Nehemiah, Ezra, Daniel was written in a language called Aramaic, which happens to be one of the pidgin, a language that any common man can then made job part of the New Testament was written in Greek language. But my, my thanks to God that when the Bible was translated to the Latin language, it did not end there. Thank God for men like William Tyndale that the Spirit of God impressed in his heart too. Even though uh, the English translation we have today, uh, the prize was his life. Hope you know that William Tyndale was born in a stake because of his body to make the, the word of God available to, please, off the keyboard. So we have English translation. So we are not reading this thing in tongues. You know, when I sang a while ago, I sang in my dialect. But we, we are not reading it in my dialect. We are reading it in a language that everybody can, can understand. So Paul is saying that we have received the ministry. And Paul is not just talking about himself. Is inclusive. All that have been called to labor under the government of the Christ. He says we have received the ministry. So the investigation we must embark on in order to advance because my attempt is to explain this term mercy. Because if you don't understand, no matter how anointed you are, how gifted you are, if you don't understand that you have received mercy, you will become a proud man. Pride is as a result of ignorance. When you see a proud man, he's ignorance of the dealings of God. He's, he's full of himself. He's unlearned. He, he might be a doctor in theology. Hmm? He might be a professor in theology. He might be an international minister, a strong Christocentric preacher. But if he is proud, he, he, he is not aware of the dealings of God. Because one of the evidence that a man has experiential and revelatory knowledge of the dealings of God is that that man becomes a humble man. Humility need not to be taught in minister's conference. Just leave the man to experience Jesus. It will be organic. Today we tell people be, be humble, be humble. No, just create an atmosphere. I, we are doing a series presently in church on discipleship. And one of the definition I gave about discipleship is that it's a process. Because discipleship is not an event. It's a process. All right? Many of you graduated from theological school, Bible schools, and you thought you have arrived. You started your journey the day you graduated, the day your convocation was. Eh? So uh, discipleship is a journey. 
So I told my people that discipleship is a process whereby an individual or a group of people are brought into the realities of Christ, realities of salvation through systematic teachings. And for such systematic teachings to be successful, it must be conducted under a Holy Ghost saturated atmosphere. It is that kind of atmosphere that when men comes out of that atmosphere, they will not just be men full of knowledge, but they will be men full of re-experience and they will be humble men. Huh? I'm not supposed to say this now. There are things I, but when I see the way my father and the Lord relate with me, it is clear that he, he, it's not because he, not just me, those of you that are close to him, you know that if you are not wise, you will, you will, lose, you will lose what you are supposed to get because humility is a very dangerous thing. You know, you, when you celebrate men of God, you say, Kai, what a humble man. That's a very dangerous thing. The most dangerous man of God to relate with is the one that is humble. My experience these days, I was telling my son that came from Benin. I said, these days, when you come to my house, I don't need to sit you down and give a lecture. I can be so free with you now, I even laugh. But you, will, you, will, you may end up leaving my house with nothing. Or you live with something. It's because how much you receive from God does not depend on God. It depends on you. And how much you receive from your man of God does not depend on him. It depends on him. Whether or not I am close to my father and the Lord is, does not depend on him. I will be the one pushing. If you will pursue me, I will push. Because it is my destiny to follow him. Are you here? Yes, so the most dangerous man of God to relate with is the one that is humble. And that one that is humble is one that has experienced God's mercies. Do you understand that? Yes. He knows God's mercies by experience. He has systematically followed God. His experience is healthy. When you see a man that came out of an angelic encounter and is a proud man, he didn't meet Jesus. He met in Jerome. <laughs> Praise Master Jesus. He, <coughs> you are laughing. He met who? In Jerome. The encounter with Jesus will break you. We humble you. It will turn you into a man that heaven can rejoice over. Hmm? A counter with Jesus will do what? We turn you into a man that heaven can do what? Rejoice over. So Paul is a humble man, not because Gamaliel, who is, was his theological mentor, taught him humility. He was a humble man because he met Jesus on his way to Damascus. And even though he's a prophetus emeritus in theology, hope you know that in Paul's day and now, there is no one that can rank to where Paul is. In fact, Oswald J. Sanders said that Paul is the most successful Christian that I've ever lived. And I agree with him. The dimension of truth that was committed to that guy is beyond what no man human being can carry. Have you read Paul's epistle and you shout in your room? Huh? Peter acknowledged that even though he's a senior apostle, things that were committed to Paul are beyond his brain. He said they are hard to comprehend. Praise Master Jesus. So Paul received mercy. Now, but before we talk about this issue of mercy, because we need to talk about what it means to lose heart, then we dissect the things that we have in verse 2. The time is short. What I have with you, with all sense of humility, we need three hours to touch it gradually. So you, you will go home and cry when we are done. You will discover, not because we are preaching to condemn you, but you will discover that you have not started doing ministry. You think ministry is preaching? No. Full-time ministry is not first leaving your job. It is being with God full-time for him to deal with you. Because if God has not dealt with you, he cannot send you. Are you hearing me? I've been doing full-time ministry for 13 years. With poverty, with lack, with hunger, with pain, with loneliness, with rejection, hate. I can be a big guy in this town now because I have friends that, that can invite me, but they don't like what I preach. Huh? But if that is the demand that Jesus has placed on my life, and he is saying, go full time. The last time I checked, doing full time is not a crime, but it's a crime now. A big crime to the modern mind because we don't know what it means to work with God. We don't know what it means for God to place a demand on a man. But I trust God that after this section, you will not remain the same. Amen. So Paul says we have received what? A ministry. So let's find out this ministry. Chapter 3. Let's read from verse 2. From verse 3. First, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's read from verse 3. Uh, 
verse 4. Verse. Uh, and we have such trust through Christ toward God. Let's understand the background. This is the problem of being a teacher. Verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. Do we begin to again to commend ourselves? Or do we need as some others a piece of of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you. Now, Paul here is, is propounding an argument because one of the reasons why 2 Corinthians was written was that Paul, by the Spirit of God, wanted to defend his apostolic ministry. Because some persons have crept into the Corinthian church and they were teaching things that are incongruous with the sentiments of the kingdom of God. They were trying to set themselves as authority over the church at Corinth. And if you go to chapter 12, chapter 11, Paul was identifying them as false apostles, ministers of darkness that have transformed themselves into ministers of light. Because even Satan has the capacity to transform himself to an angel of light. So it is no wonder that his ministers have taken that kind of posture. Apart from, because 2 Corinthians is one of Paul's most personal epistles. If you go through 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul unveiled his loneliness. You will, when you go through 2 Corinthians, you will not just see Paul, the man of stature. You will not just see Paul, the man full of epignosis. But you will see Paul, the lonely man. You will see Paul, the, the suffering man. The, one, the guy that wants to be a big preacher can't preach from 2 Corinthians. It's a book that unveils suffering, hardship, loneliness, shipwreck. I know, I know you. You want to go to Lagos and join one church and be a big man. Don't read 2 Corinthians. Just stay with, you shall serve the Lord that God, for it is he that giveth thee power to make wealth. Stay with it, stay with it, because if you want to advance, because that one you interpret is even the contest, there is problem. If you want to do a talk on that place, you will discover that we are thieves. <laughs> I discovered that now, I was telling my wife that now we are using God to make a name. That's what we are doing in Nigeria now. Both musicians, we are not celebrities. Hope you know that a, a gospel minister is not a celebrity. He is a burden bearer. But now we are celebrities. So we have a young man that did, I call it hit song. So when he's going to the hit tree now, he is on a video. When, when he's going to Bobby's hair, he is, he is a celebrity now. My son told me that he came to Uniben and he was sharing money around. Oh my God. He was displaying money. He's a, the man of God is in town. So you see, that is a proof that people came into, into fame by chance without experiencing the wilderness dealings of God. And that makes them celebrity. But the man that met the Jesus of Nazareth not the Jesus of Abba, but the Jesus of Nazareth. Kai, that man will, will be afraid to be known. He will want to hide himself and only Jesus. You see, I'm not here to mark it. But you see, this is one of the reasons why men like the great apostle Aramel Osaye is greatly hated in Nigeria. In case you don't know, forget about the fame. There is more to talk about this. The, the, the number one man that is most hated in Africa, the first that will come on the list is the great apostle Aaron Elsai. He didn't do wrong. It is because his wilderness experience has affected his heart posture. And that, that heart posture is what determines what comes out of his lips. Are you still here? Are you still here? So 2 Corinthians talk about Paul's suffering, his hardship, his loneliness. And because of his impact in the church at Corinth, he is saying that we don't need to explain whom we are to you. Just like I don't need to come to you now. Papa don't need to tell you that I'm his son. Just listen to me for one 30 minutes. You will know where I come from. You don't need to write letters of commendation. You don't need to do a long thesis that that young man is my son. You, you see, by their fruit, you will know where they are streaming from. Paul says, yeah! Verse 2. Yeah, our epistles. Huh? He's giving us insight into ministry that one of the signs that you are a ministry, a minister after the order of Jesus is that after a long time of sincerely laboring over a people, they will become a living epistle. 
That when you look at them, there will be a testament to the message that you carry. You see, do you know how you know who the preacher is? Check those that have been following him for 10 years. Check those that are under his ministration for 10 years. Then you can conclude whom the guy is. If after 10 years, in a large congregation, you have not raised men that have become epistles, that unambiguously reveal the reality of the glorious Christ, sir, you may have a private jet, a private jet, but with all sense of humility, you are a failure. Paul says you are living epistles. No one are read by all men. It means that when people see you, they will say, these are Paul's disciples. When they see you, they are, ah, these guys are Paul's disciples. It is known and read by all men. Verse 3. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of of the flesh that is of the heart. We can't touch this. Verse 4. Because we are trying to define the ministry that we have received. And we have such trust through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything has been from ourselves. This is another definition of a man that has met Jesus. His accomplishment, his impact is always, the glory always returned to the one that sent him. If at the end of blessing people you become a god, you, you are a failure. Yes, the last time I checked, a preacher was entering a church and everybody knelt down. Everybody laid down. Even though you don't, even if you don't want it, it is easy for you to tell them if you don't stand up and won't enter the church. But you see, we like glory, we like praise. You know, you know, we like praise. We want to be acknowledged. But Paul says, this thing that we are doing, we are not sufficient. This is Paul, the intellectual. This is Paul, the theologian. This is Paul, the man of great encounters. This is Paul, the man of great books. This is Paul, the man of great experience. Yeah, he is saying, we are not sufficient of ourselves. We do not have that right, that ability to think of such things of ourselves. But our sufficiency is what? From God. Verse 4, verse 6. Who also made us sufficient, able ministers of the new covenant. Oh my God. This ministry is not of the latter, but of the spirit. For the latter killeth, but the spirit does what? Gives life. Verse 7. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not. Look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, verse 8. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? So you understand now. Paul, the ministry Paul is talking about here is the ministry of the Spirit. There are two ministries talked about here, or two covenants. First is the ministry of death. And when he pause, Paul says that the ministry of Moses is a ministry of death, he is not speaking derogatively. He is not trying to downgrade Moses' impact. He is talking about the, 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 the condition, the spiritual condition of the people that Moses was ministering to. These people were spiritually dead men. They do not have access, legal access to God. It was a, a big trouble for them. If they escape into where the holies of holies is, they do not have the spiritual capacity to behold the beauty of God. They were dead men. So Paul says he's a ministry of death to death people. But Paul is talking about a ministry of the spirit, a ministry of life, because it's a ministry to living people. Are you here? Yes, sir. It's a ministry to people that have been quickened by the spirit. Oh my God, you need to study Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. The Bible says, you are the quickened who were dead in trespasses. But you have been quickened. You have been made alive. You have, asked, you have access to God. If you go to verse 18 and verse 19, Paul says, we have access by one spirit unto the Father. For through him, through Jesus, we both, both the Jews and the Gentiles, 
have access. Let me hear you say access. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? The reason people still pray with prayer manual is because they don't know access. You know that thing you, you want to buy January for, for you don't know you have access. So your prayer life is tied to codes. Prayer point. You are still a man of prayer point. But I came to announce to you that we have what? Access. Let me hear you say access. access. Let me hear you say access. access. So Paul says we have access. This access is called the ministry of life. It is called the ministry of the spirit. You get it now? So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1. So you understand that there are two ministries that Paul was talking about in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. It is the ministry of death and it is the ministry of life. Ministry to spiritually dead people and ministry to spiritually living people. Who are you? What category do you fall into? Say, I am alive unto God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I, I thought you liked grace message. Say, I am alive unto God. You are not preaching it well. Say, I am alive unto God. Preach it one more time. Say, I am alive unto God. I have said glory to God. Oh my God. If this is all the gospel is all about, after some time we will discover that we, we are liars. Even though what we are confess, confessing is true, but our life is not a testament to that reality. That's why we teach consecration. Yeah. Are you here? Yes, so, New Testament ministry is a ministry of life. It's a ministry of bringing men into realities in Christ. Realities in God. And it's a, it, it, this ministry is a big ministry. We are so preoccupied with this ministry. That's the reason we teach the things we teach. Not because we can't teach Seven keys to make your life work. You know that thing is easy to, in, in 40 minutes we are done. We will bring books from bookstores, book even written by unbelievers. A, a preacher went to a crusade some years ago. A big church, oh my God, in this town went for a crusade. And the case study, the, 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 he was using uh, Dan, Dan Gote as a case study. He, a crusade granny was teaching Seven keys to make your life work. One of the keys was hard work. And his case study was the great Dangote. Now the question is, he is not bothered about the salvation of the people he is ministering to. His body is keys. And you see, many of you have received keys and your hand is so heavy now. I hear Kabbalah. None of them are opening. The, what we do here is master key. You, did not, you don't need to find more keys. Serve Jesus. Hallelujah. And by himself, he will position you in, in a cool village. That's the key to make your life work. He will send you to Samagidi. Yes, he will send you to Okwakwa. He will send you to Egbo. That's the key to make your life work. You know why? The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. That's the key to make your life work. <laughs> I know you are looking for 10 keys. To make your life easy. And among those kids, prayer is not among them. If there is prayer, I will be glad. It's not pr prayer. It's not among those kids. The kids are much. We have to even duplicate now to give our family members. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But we have received a serious ministry. It is a ministry of bringing men into kingdom realities. So because of the seriousness, seriousness of this ministry... Uh, Paul be decided to be consecrated. And Paul is saying that this ministry that we have received is not because we are strong. Are you following my progression? Yes, sir. It's not because we are intelligent. It's not because we are vibrant. It's not because we came from noble families. It is because we have received mercy. Do you understand? Now, the word mercy as used in this particular verse is from the Greek word elios. Let me hear you say elios. Are you here? Yes, Let me hear you say Elios. Elio. Now, it means pity. Let me hear you say pity. pity. It means compassion. Let me hear you say compassion. Yeah. It means that if God called a man into ministry, it's because God had mercy on him. Pastor Mine was diving into what I wanted to. I was telling Anoa when we were coming because the guy that was supposed to come and pick me disappointed us. So I have to find a way because we are much in my house so that we can come. I was telling Anoa that. This guy is diving. You see, the best of your plan is foolishness. 
The last time you were studying electrical engineering, Shalom, what did you do in school? Oh my God. He, he don't know where his, his, his certificate is now. <coughs> he was, and the plan is after graduation, he is going to the, to the United States to live a good life. God was looking at the plan and God showed mercy. Say, this one we waste. This one, we, this is your mundane plan. We waste. You, we just waste life. You will live for 70 years and there is no record in eternity that you existed. So Paul says, God knowing that we do not have the capacity to plan our lives, he decided to show us mercy by calling us into ministry so that we can be useful. That's what it means. Are you here? Yes, sir. Uh, a, a preacher was telling me. The guy is driving GL, not GLK, GL 350, I think. He came to me. He said, you know why I'm driving the jeep? I said, no. He said, he told God. You know people can tell God now. Yes, sir. You know consecrated men don't tell God. God tell them. Yes, sir. Huh? He said he told God. Because his father died and he inherited the church. And he wanted to be a footballer. And uh, Let me not go deep. He said he told God that if he will accept this calling, he must be a big man. I wish I could say that. People's rank in the spirit so high that God listened to them. And here I am, jumping, keke. I wish I, I can tell God that in 2024, if you will not make me a voice in the city, I will. <laughs> oh, the guy said he told God. He didn't know that God separated him to ministry is because God had mercy. Hope you know that now that you are in ministry, you know it's mercy that God showed to you yes, because sir. you were confused. You were studying philosophy, but you don't have sense. You were, <coughs> you, were, you were studying Aristotle, studying everything, but when you quietly think about your life, you are confused, you don't have plans. NYC, you are mass, machine and, and sweating, but in the secret, you are confused. After now, what? I, I made that funny this morning. God saw your confusion. He saw that this thing will lead to depression and your life will not be something good to look. He said, come and serve me. You received. We are those that have received. Yes. Are you here? You see, this thing that we have received is something that has been ordained before the foundation of the world. And listen to me. I've taught this year before. God is an eternal now. Let me say eternal now. Are you here? Let me say eternal now. It means that in God there is no past, present, and future. He is the beginning, the end. It means that your future is his presence. Your presence is his future. If you want to explain it, your brain go blow. He is beyond your calculation. But in, in his dealing with man, he decided to limit himself by systematizing his work, separating his works into three, three dispensations, if I will use that word. God's word, if you want to study the workings of God, you will, you will need to study what we call eternity past. You will need to study time. Then you will need to study eternity to come. Let's give an example. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's read from the 3. Are you still here? We will pray. Stay with me for a few minutes. Ephesians chapter 3. Blessed be God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. So Paul says we have been blessed, all right, with every spiritual blessings. Now, if you go for that, it tells us the blessings, all right, because the blessing there is not GLK, it's not GLA, it's not Rejrova, it's not, eh? it is spiritual blessings, even though God blesses people materially. But the context is not material blessings. Are you still here? Yes, sir. All right. Verse 4, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. That's what I want you to do. This is talking about eternity past. Your salvation is a product of God's eternal planning. So we can conclude from scripture that God is not planning now. In time, God does not plan. In time, God executes. Are you here? Yes, sir. 
In time, God does what? You saw, he told Jeremiah, before I formed you, in eternity past, I knew you. Before you came out of the womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So Jeremiah will not wake up one morning and say, I want to be a lawyer. No, in eternity past, his life has been concluded. Has it come to your mind that everything about your life has been planned? Can you preach to your neighbor and say, your life has been carefully planned by God? Can you preach to somebody say, your ministry has been carefully planned by God? Preach it one more time. Say, your life has been carefully planned by God. So your ministry that we are talking about here is something that has been planned in eternity past. So we, we shouldn't do anything in time to change the template. That's what we are trying to do as a generation. We want to rewrite the scriptures. And part of the things we are doing is that we are taking holiness out of the picture. We are taking sincerity out of the picture. We are taking witness out of the picture. We are taking consecration out of the picture because we are rewriting a Bible that will be suitable to the appetite of this generation. And if this is happening outside the church, we won't be bothered. This is happening in the church. It is more difficult now to be a true preacher in this generation because the pressure, don't try it to join what we call ministers for all. You will be frustrated. And I'm, are you here? The intimidation alone. Because men are not willing to stick to the eternal blueprint that God has crafted out in his wisdom. Theophilus says, into the wisdom before time began. Mm -hmm. You called us into and you made a plan that we live and move and have all our beings in you. Into the wisdom before time. Mm. You called us into, and you made a plan that we live and I in you. Into the wisdom before time. You called us in. We live and move. We live and move. Yeah. Let's chant it one more time. Oh, into the wisdom before time begins. You caught us into that we live and move. Oh, yeah, Kabele, and I will be in you. Ah, So that wisdom, that 
existed before time. It was that wisdom that planned your ministry. So, when you have, when you receive an intelligence that God has called you into ministry, the first thing to do is to consult that wisdom. To find out the navigating compass. You see, witches don't know this wisdom. Oloku don't know this wisdom. Aziza don't know this wisdom. The powers in your father's house don't know. If you, have, if you align with this wisdom, you will be bigger than your enemies in reality. They will lack the capacity to understand your life because you are functioning from a higher layer. From a higher pedestal. I came from a very terrible family. I and Papa were traveling to Asaba Monday and we were just sharing together. Anna was telling me how bad my family was. And it's not a bad message. It's a reality. I came from a place whereby there is no hope of a better future spiritually, academically, financially. Nothing. In a whole generation, if you are the only first person that have legally gotten married after more than 30 years, then you have so much to deal with. Then I found out that in, in order for me to do warfare, prayer, and be successful, it must be a function of a higher wisdom. So I, I, I found that one of the wisdom, that one is limited, it's more compared to the one I want to tell you. I found out what is consistent with my family life. You see, some of you don't know how to do warfare. You don't know what is wrong with your family. So you don't know what to fight. I found that in my family, they don't get married legally. And if they get, if at all they marry, they don't stay. It's an ancient pattern. I found out that in my family, there is promiscuity. Bumbo has stature <coughs> in my family. Destinies of men is as a result of alignment with Bumbo. I mark that. And I, when I checked my life, you see, we have received mercy. I will, don't worry, stay with me. I have a short time. Why playing music early 90s, 2000, growing up? I was exposed to a bomb bomb too. Don't laugh. I'm staring something serious. If this is all I can share with you this morning, I will leave you to go and seek Jesus. You see, some of us found something so that you won't struggle to find some things. The reason we preach is to expose what we found out. There are some things we tasted that you shouldn't taste. Learn from our experience. So I was supposed to fornication very early. I can't remember the numbers of sisters that I have dealt with. I remember the night I was initiated into Man 5 confraternity in Baptist Primary School, Eku. That blessed evening, 9 o'clock in the night. Some few guys separated me into a classroom and they gave me a beating of my life. For something that will destroy me, the, the, to enter destruction, you have to be beaten first. <laughs> you know that thing. To, to be destroyed, you have to be beaten. That night, we shared egg, egg. We, 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 the, my, my hand, and it was orchestrated by Satan to keep me in alignment with what is wrong with my family. You see, sin, immorality, is a good way to stay with the problem of your family. It's a good way. If you, you don't need to cause, you don't need to, just be careless with your life. Then what affected your mother, it, it will be like a baptism. It will come upon you. You are a graduate from uni, ben, but you are like your father. Graduate from uni, lag, but nothing separates you from, it's a pattern. So I studied what was wrong with my family. When I found Jesus, then I marked this one. You, one of the things I did when I started marking them is that some years ago, I wrote down the kind of woman I would marry. Because I know that my family, nobody has built family constantly. Nobody has built family. You don't know what is wrong with your family. That's why you are careless. Nobody built family. You know family life is sweet, and God ordained it. So I wrote, I will marry. I even write, wrote the complexion. A singer. I finished praying in the midnight. I wrote down the kind of children I will give birth to. Because God told me this battle is not an intellectual battle. So 
one of the things he did for me, which you won't agree, he told me, I wrote Jamb, I was preparing to study banking and finance. He said, your book in that wisdom, there is no time in the book that you were found in a secular institution. Go to the four years, to go to Avesta's Theological Seminary. Stayed there for four years. I escaped, I went to Nehemiah for Bible school of one year, six months so that I can escape and go back because nobody is educated. I needed to. This thing you are hearing now is not a product of secular education. You don't know you are as intelligent. You don't know you are how intelligent you are until you meet Jesus. All the potentials in you will be activated. So he said, don't go. Oh! I, the day I went to buy the form, I was angry. I played show. After playing show, I went to buy the form. Stayed for four years. Struggled to pay my rent. I suffered in this town. Life is much better now. Now I still wear fine shoes, they wear good wristwatch. Who born? Who dash monkey? Banana. I suffered. My special delicacy at the year number 16 was akara and bread. That thing has the capacity to take me for three days in the journey. All in the process of fulfilling destiny, separating from family diseases, and aligning with the wisdom before time began. And you think that God is trying to strike my life. No, Paul said we received what? Mercy. So I labored. I labored. I labored. I wrote down everything about my life. And here I am. Not very materially successful. I'm not a big man. Don't think so. Tomorrow when you see me, eh? on Monday when you see me, you will see me in Keke. Are you hearing me now? You will see me where? You won't see me in a Lexus. Even though we are trusting the Lord to bless us with the car to help our business, our movement to be easy. I preach almost every place every week. So God bless me with some people that can come, come, drop me here, drop me here, and they respond. So I'm not saying that I'm a, I'm a successful man, but I'm saying that my name is in God's book. Hallelujah. He is aware I'm existing. He is aware that I'm existing. My life is counting. I remember countless times I would be done in church. It will look as if I'm hearing God applauding me. I've had God say thank you. Thank you. Then I cried. I was hearing thank you. I was crying. I found mercy. Not by strength. It is not of him that will it. Many of you are struggling to accept the demand of God for your life. You think God wants to stress you. I came to announce to you. He is extending his mercy. The things I teach now, and I say this with all sense of humility, the things I teach now, they are not as a result of theological education. So much experience in God and in life. God allowed me to go through some things, and God told me, teach. Don't allow those that we bring under you to suffer the loneliness that you suffered. The reason I'm so open to many people, even though they take that simplicity for granted, is because God warned me. There are, there are few laborers in your generation. If you become complicated for people to reach you, you will not help those that have sent you to help. So live a simple life. We will still be like this when God has given us Range Rover. We will be like this when he has opened the door of nations. We will be like this. And he will help our hearts. So Paul said we have received what? Mercy. My time is, I have a few minutes. I couldn't finish this thing. I couldn't finish this thing. If we stop here, did I bless you? Yes, okay, let's continue for a few minutes. Second Corinthians chapter 3. So Paul says, we have received this ministry because we have found Elios. We have found mercy. Because we have found mercy, we do not lose heart. Hmm? Because we find mercy, to lose heart, I think the Greek word is 
en kakeho. En kakeho. It means to lack courage. It means to lose heart. It means to be faint-hearted. It is the same word that Jesus used in Luke chapter 18 verse 1. When he says that men ought, ought always to pray and not to lose heart. En kakeho. It means that we do not get discouraged, we do not get fed up, we do not say, ah, oh, they suffer too much, let me go. No, we find mercy. If you begin to study that, Paul said, we are, go to verse, let me open my Bible. Mm. Oh, Jesus Christ. I wish we had time. Are you here? Okay, go to verse 8. We'll go, come back to verse 1. Eh? Let's go to verse 8. Now, Paul said, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not what? Crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Verse 9. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. If you study, always carrying about in the body. Go back to verse 10, now, man of God. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be made manifest in our body. Paul says that we deliver ourselves to troubles, to shipwreck. If you study, please, after now, before the evening section, study 2 Corinthians. Paul gave us details of his suffering. And Paul is saying that in the midst of this hardship, we faint not. Go back to verse 2. Are you getting it now? In the midst of these troubles, in the midst of the rejections, in the midst of the persecutions, in the midst of the disappointments, in the midst of the shipwreck, in the midst of the hunger, we faint not. Let me just show you something. One, one things Paul suffered, and yet he, he refused to faint. Chapter 11, 2 Corinthians. Oh, okay. Chapter 11, verses, let's read from verse 22. We faint not. Are there Hebrews? He is trying to attack the false preachers because they are Jews. Came to discredit and degrade Paul's labors. Are these false apostles, Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelite? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Verse 23. Look at, Paul suffered a lot of things, but he said, we what? We faint not. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labor small. Can we do this together? In labor small. In stripes above. In prison small. In death all. 24. From the Jews, how many times? I receive. That's how many? How is it that Paul was able to count the things, the numbers of whips he received? He counted them. Verse 25. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. This is why I told you that the modern preacher can't be a student of 2 Corinthians. The modern preacher cannot. This one we do. That we, we want to walk on red carpet. Charlatans. I saw one. He's the son to one big one. I, I, I'm trying to speak in a very humble manner. When you see them, this I have arrived posture. And they can't conduct Bible study on salvation for 30 minutes. Jeep, I have never, count my lips, I have never fe felt belittled by their success. I've never compared myself with any. My sons are here. Ask them. I've never. I'm content with the people God has given me to teach. You see, contentment is one of the keys. It's one of the secrets of, you, if you will not be a fake preacher, you will, you will have to learn contentment. If you are not first content, you will lie, you will steal, you will do strange things to get money. This one that you want to have Gucci shares in your house, and you say the call of God is burning in your heart, Trust me, I give you five years, you will be a thief. 
Five years. If, if that is not too much. That one at Uduro is not up to five years. You will, you will kill your mother to buy Jeep. This thing, your high is on Jeep. You see your shoe bending. You know you have Kobo leg now. Not because you have Kobo leg naturally. It's because you're trekking as the sole of the shoe have eaten. <laughs> so you are like this. Not, you, when you look at it, you will cry. Ah, now so I got, you will soon steal money. I was torn three times. I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys. Are you here? In journeys. In Paris. 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 In Paris, among first brethren, this is the most painful one. First brethren. We have experienced this. First brethren. They will come and say, we love your work. They will even attempt to teach like us. But they are first brethren. When they are alone and we are not there, they preach against us. First brethren. I refuse to associate with first brethren. For the past few months, God opened our eyes to see them in the land. First brethren. No, they are false brethren. They are false brethren. Paul said they are false brethren. I have suffered a lot of things, but the most, the, the, the one I could not endure was false brethren. They are close to me when they have something to get from me. But any slight opportunity that will stab me at the back, they are false brethren. When you see some of us, we don't have, few, we don't have much friends, we have experienced false brethren. Strange people. My time in 11.30 will be done so that you can go and eat beans. <coughs> I know you like beans. Beans. But Paul says, in the midst of all of these things, we do what? You have forgotten. We faint not. If you are like John in Patmos, you will forget the visions that were given to you because this short teaching now you don't forget. <laughs> John, so many things he penned you, just felt it, you couldn't. <coughs> we felt not. Okay, let's watch it now in five minutes. Chapter four now, we don't finish here. I just try to explain this fainting thing. Boy, experience many things. So, this your suffering now is not a new development. Uh -huh. This your poverty is not peculiar to you. People have gone through worse and are still going through worse and we still go through worse. And Jesus is Lord. Show yourself that you are God. Bless me. No, in your poverty is, is God. So we thank not because we receive mercy. So daddy was preaching. Where? Okay, I was listening to one of his sermons, the one he preached at Awoshi, talking about those that have suffered, those that have, were persecuted during the Roman persecution. And a sister will come. You know, I'm trying to quote verbatim, but I can't. God will allow his children to be killed. And we prove himself to be God by delivering them, and he is still God. We want to practice convenient Christianity. That does not reveal the character of God. You see, that thing that does not inconvenience you, you can't call it commitment. You can't call it commitment. That Christianity that you want to practice, that ministry you want to do, that does not place a demand on your comfort, you can't call it ministry. Paul said, we faint not. So one of the counsels a, a, a father gave to a son, he said, endure hardship. What kind of father are you? He said, as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus. What kind of father are you? Instead of you to tell me, sir, oh, stay in Ephesus. I will send food. I will send money. Be at peace, Timothy. He, was, he said, endure hardship as a good soldier. Do you mean to prove that I'm a soldier? I have to endure hardship. We faint. Verse 2, so we'll, we'll wrap up now. 
Thank you for your time. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. Even though we felt not, even though we still do ministry, we will not do ministry in immorality. We will not do ministry in masturbation. Daddy shared something with me or with us about a, a, a woman that was having her husband traveled, if I will remember correctly. And she met her pastor to, to, to tell of her frustration. She is having sexual urges and she don't know how to control herself. So she met her daddy in the Lord to say, Daddy, what do I do? The pastor introduced him to pornography. Hidden things of shame. There are things that should be ashamed to talk about. But pre preachers do it on Sunday morning and they come to preach. If they tell you what people do now, you, will, you, you go shock and they preach fire. Amen. Paul said, we renounce. It means that the call of God upon your life will not automatically take away loss. It is you that will renounce it. The call of God upon your life will not take away greed. It is you that will renounce it. It means that this thing was there. It, and it's still there in the flesh now that you are born again. But it is used that we want renown. Do you know a call to ministry is a call to renunciation? Yes, sir. It's a call to renunciation. What have you renounced? Paul said we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. The hidden things of shame. Let me rush it. Not walking in craftiness. This is the demand of God. That we renounce. First, that we thank not. Secondly, that we renounce. Hidden things of shame, help me. Lost. Many of you here, you want to lay hands on sisters and you have not controlled your appetite. You're lost. Many of you, just an handshake, something is running through your body like electricity. And you like hugging so much. You, you, you like to hug. But you know that you have lost issue. If I were you, you say, I heard something about a brother in this, a young man so gifted. Because God has been dealing with me. What you have not prayed against, whom you are supposed, you have access to, that you can talk to, that you have not talked to, don't speak against them. You are, don't speak against what you have not prayed against. Many of you want to, what is wrong with the church? And you are not an intercessor. Everybody now suddenly has a call to address the church. Suddenly. All of us now have a call to address the church. You give a young man 10 minutes to do opening prayer. He will use 8 minutes to address the church. And he does not intercede for the church in the secret. So I called the young man. I said, I had immorality issues about you. You sleep with the sisters in your team. Abortion. What is the issue? He admitted. This is true. And I confessed a lot of things to him. And I prayed. Then I saved his number. I said, I will be close to me. I want to help you. But that girl you are dating, deep, separate. You don't need a woman now. You are still young. You don't need a, a woman now. Go ahead yourself. He probably, don't go for some ministration. Relax. Because I saved his number. I decided to monitor him. His status is full of ministry engagement. He has not renounced. He has not renounced hidden things of shame. And there is a popular video that is trending online of one man of God that was confessing what happened to him in a certain ministry that he was working under, a man of God. And he was using that video to justify himself. To say, ah, the things I heard about that man of God today, he was not playing victim. You know that video, the man of God is playing victim. He is not playing victim. That as though, he, if that you didn't do those things, but he is not trying to parade himself as though he has been victimized and that video is a consolation. He has not renounced. One of the signs that you have renounced hidden things of dishonesty, hidden things of shame, is that you are quiet, you retreat, and you seek God for deliverance. Lost can be patient with you for 10 years. And on the 10th year, it will reveal itself like a volcano. You are now have, you now have sisters on the level of, of, of popularity. It will show up when you are married with three kids. Because you thought that marriage is a cure to fornication. No. It will show up with strength. Six pack. It will, 
you are going to administration, you just entered and loss is coming. Then you discover that you did renounce. It was there. Paul said we renounced. Hidden things of dishonesty. Number two, not working in craftiness. We can't touch this. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. So Paul renounced. Paul did not faint. Paul did not faint. He renounced hidden things of shame. And he, 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 re, he renounced walking in craftiness and refused to handle the word of God deceitfully. You know what it means to handle the word of God deceitfully? To, to turn it to fit into your... is deceitful. Maybe you have issues with somebody and you look for a scripture. You know, today we use people to attack. Not because we have a body for the church. It's because somebody offended you. And you look for, you, you can even take the scripture out of context. You are handling the word of God deceitfully. You committed a sin. Instead of you to repent, you look for a scripture that will justify when sin abound, grace abound more and more. You are handling the word of God deceitfully. Our prayer tonight is simple. Lord, we faint not. We renounce hidden things of shame. We refuse to walk in craftiness. We refuse to handle the word of God deceitfully. In a few minutes, can you pray? We renounce, we faint not. Number one, we renounce hidden things of, of shame. We refuse to handle, to walk in craftiness. And we refuse to handle the word of God deceitfully. In three minutes, can you pray? We faint not. We renounce hidden things of shame. We refuse to walk in craftiness. We refuse to handle the word of God deceitfully. We faint not. We renounce it in things of shame. We refuse to walk in craftiness. And we refuse to handle the word of God deceitfully. It's a fourfold prayer point. It's a fourfold prayer point. Two minutes more. It's a fourfold prayer point. We faint not. We renounce hidden things of shame. We refuse to walk in craftiness. We refuse to handle the word of God deceitfully. Everybody stand up. All oh, that I know. Yeah. 
I me. Pray that prayer for another one minute. A few minutes. I was giving ten minutes more. I've taken two minutes out of it. Can you pray? I fed not. I renounce hidden things of shame. I walk not in craftiness. I do not handle the word of God deceitfully. I faint not. I know it's difficult, but I faint not. I know they hate me, but I faint not. I know many people don't like me, but I faint not. I know the lack and poverty is intense, but I faint not. I faint not. I know my family now treat me as an outcast, but I faint not. I know my brothers and sisters thought I don't have plans for my life, but I faint not. I know my mother is regretting that she trained me to school because I have decided to do ministry, but I faint not. I know my father is thinking I'm useless because I've not trained me through school. I have decided to do ministry. I thank God. I thank God. In Jesus' name. If you are here, there has been this temptation to faint. Is, has been strong. You are discouraged. Oh, you feel you should just lock down everything and go somewhere where you are not known and start a new life. Can you come? God wants to encourage your hearts this morning. Yes, you are here. You are here. There are some brothers, discouragement has eaten your heart. Some of you for the past one week, some of you for the past one month, for some of you for the past few days. Oh, can you come and kneel before Jesus and renew your commitment? The Lord, I faint not. I faint not. My friends are mocking me. My family is mocking me. My sisters are not happy with me. But I faint not. Brother, sister, you need to come forward and obey this call. I faint not. I faint not. It is hard for me in school. It is hard for me in school. But I faint not. It is difficult for me at home. But I faint not. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Sister, brother, don't be ashamed. Can you renew your commitment? I faint not. I faint not. I'm not praying any special prayer for you. But being in the front, you are going to live here with something mighty, something powerful, a stronger conviction, a stronger weight of glory. Can you help me with this, mic? The volume is down. I'm stressing myself. I faint not. Kabaratela. Shaba Kambarita Akamba Akaba God is sending you as an evangelist, but you are afraid because of the demand. Can you renew your commitment? I faint not. You have started the ministry. You know you are in the will of God, but people are struggling to come. It looks as if your labors are not recognized. Can you say I faint not? Shaba Baba Eratata, and there are some of you that need to renounce hidden things of shame. Join them here, don't be ashamed. You are here, you know, you know, you are a man of Rema, you are a man of charisma. You know, when you lead prayers, the whole place is shake, but you know, there are hidden things of shame in your life. Can you say, Lord, I renounce hidden things of shame? Kabarate Sebo Kabalaba. Ekebalata singa, o kabarate, eshababa, ekebedebo, watapa, zaparateka, 
We have five minutes now. Ayagaba. There is someone here. You need to renounce that hidden things of shame. Ayababa. You know your problem is pornography. You know your problem is masturbation. You know your problem. Hidden things of shame. Shababa. Akabarate. Zabarabe. Ekebe. Ayababa. Bababa. Shababa. Bababa. Shababa. Bababa. Eke marabra bara harule shaba baba baba ogena ovie shaba ovie nuta baruru ogena shaba oride 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 ogena osi wige shaba baba kaba oh my god eke berete yayote marabra bara ogena shaba bara te. Eh, marabro para arule. Ogana ovie, ovie nuta baruru. Ogana, ori de ori de ori. Ogana osi wigenes. What an honor to be called an anointed, to be a man. And you said we are dancing. We just raise it two more times, then I'm done. What a no, what a no. Shaba ba ba ba. To be a man and yourself. To be a man and yourself. Sit mercy oh, to be a man and your son to be a man and your son yes to the reading of your heart what a what a what a 